apparently the best way to make sure someone isn't lying to you is to keep constant eye contact, study their body language and wire their nipples up to 10,000 volts. <laughs> In medieval England, a suspected liar would have to carry a red-hot iron bar for nine paces. If their hands were burned, they were declared a liar and then hanged. Of course, if their hands weren't burnt, they were declared a witch and then hanged. <laughs> and so, against all our better judgments, we start with round one, Home Truths, in which guests read out a statement about themselves. At this point, they've no idea what's written on the card. It might be a true fact or a big fat lie that they'll just have to run with. The opposing team uh, then use all their powers of deduction, or failing that, a lot of random guesswork, to establish if it's the truth or, conversely, not. So, John it is uh, with our first Home Truth. John? I was caught short in Prince Charles's garden. <laughs> what do you mean, caught short? What does that mean? Are you not familiar with that phrase? Oh. Would you like me to elaborate? Please do. Uh, yes, within the bounds of BBC viewing, yes. <laughs> wee wee. Oh, all right. Taking a piss. Yes. <laughs> Got you. Excellent. Why were you in Prince Charles's garden? Um, I, it was uh, a tour. A, t a tour? <laughs> <laughs> Which garden of his? Uh, He's got at, many at, gardens. At right? Highgrove. At Highgrove. The yes. garden at Highgrove. Yes. <laughs> and you were what? What sort of tour? Well, I mean, don't, could I look in the yellow pages? Highgrove has Prince tours. Charles's garden High, tours. Highgrove has, <laughs> Highgrove has tours. Oh, right, so it's open to the public. Yeah, you have to write and be invited. You have to. Right, and oh, anyone you, have to, you have to send off for an invitation. <laughs> well, anyone from the public can write. Dear Charlie, any yes, chance yeah. of a piss in your garden? <laughs> Does he know, Prince Charles, that you did this? I'm assuming that he might know about it. You assume right. that a random uh... tourist pissing in his garden, <laughs> that's going to get back to his garden. <laughs> it actually set the alarm off. What did he say? <laughs> Are you, you're just bragging now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> probably weed through a laser beam. <laughs> is there any medical reason why you can't anticipate reading? <laughs> I mean, is that what we're dealing with here? <laughs> yeah, I'm incontinent. <laughs> David, we're going to have to rush you for a decision here. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm just, that's a bit odd that you sort of thought... I mean, I'm, I'm sure Prince Charles has got a large garden, but I don't think that would constitute being too far from civilization <laughs> to find a proper loot. Oh, yeah, he's a dirty little liar. So your team captain, David... You're going to have to you, make a decision. You think, You're going to have to override think you one tell of your... the truth. And you don't. I don't. I, I'm, I'm with you. I think, I think that's a lie. OK, they're saying it's a lie. What is the truth, John? The truth is... the story... it's true. Uh, <laughs> hey. Nice one. Well, there you are. Yes, it's absolutely true. Uh, John was caught short in Prince Charles's garden, so if you thought your Dutchy original biscuits tasted funny, check where the oats are from. <laughs> of course, uh, John could have just done as Camilla does when she's caught short, lifted her tail and hosed the snails off the path. <laughs> and so, uh, to Paddy for his home truth. I've snogged Paris Hilton. <laughs> well, there is an obvious question that... Yeah. Begs itself. Yeah. How come you ugly get? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Where were you? Uh, at the James Bond premiere. So you snogged Paris Hilton? Yeah. It was at the premiere. Yeah. At the party no, afterwards. No, 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 it, it was, was at the premiere. premiere. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a friend of mine, dared me to do it. I went up to her, said hello, and instead of kissing her on the cheek, I went on a lips. Oh, you didn't even ask her, you just lunged in? Yeah. That's <laughs> confident. What? Oh, hi. What? That is very confident. What flavour was her lip gloss? Uh, if you kissed her, I you'd remember like. the flavour. It was just like sticky. I don't know. It wasn't a flavour. <laughs> it was sticky. Sticky. Yeah. It was just. I'll tell you what. That... You know all the chat up lines, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks, love. For that were right. Sticky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Magic. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to come up with some kind of an answer, either true or lie. You see, the thing is, I'm from the same <laughs> part of the world as he's from, and I can believe this is true because it just saves time, money, expense. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got time for all this, love. Yeah. OK, so you're thinking it's probably true. What do you think, Don? True. Do you reckon? Nah. What do you think? I'll go with the boys. I'll say true. OK, they're saying it's true. Paddy? Oh, it was a lie! Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is a lie. Uh, Paddy has not snogged uh, Paris Hilton, which, if you look at the statistics, is the least probable answer. <laughs> 
Uh, Paris Hilton, 26, recently likened herself to Marilyn Monroe and Princess Diana, both of whom died sudden deaths at a tragically early age. So, our next... <laughs> our uh, next entries comes from Dom, so uh, fess up, if you would. Right. My nickname at school was Ear Sniffer. <laughs> OK, David's team, is this right or rubbish? Uh, was there an incident that uh, sparked this nickname off? Were you caught sniffing someone's ears? I, I think that's the long and short of it, yeah. A girl called Alexandra Westberg, it started off with her, and I got slightly obsessed with her, and then I did that thing, you know, where you get your arm and you, you, you scrape it with a compass until you've got their name in blood on your arm, yeah. and then it goes septic, then it goes green on your arm. But then, yeah, so I sniffed her ear, then it just kind of snowballed. I'm so glad I'm gay because we don't what? do that kind of thing. Oh. <laughs> Please don't go. <laughs> he was, he was, he was ear sniffer. I was rear sniffer. That was. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, David, what are we thinking? Uh, well, you've sort of glossed over the actual what? first ear sniffing incident. Yes. Where were you? Were you in a lesson? Orchestra. Orchestra. During orchestra, she played the piccolo. I played the viola, not violin, viola. And uh, she. Hey, hang on, what? You had a pretty tough upbringing. No, it was. <laughs> It was hell. I could ask a question. Are you Ant or Deck? <laughs> Would it be possible if you could come over here and just show me how the sniff was done on David's ear? Can I not just try it on his? Yeah. Or what about John's? Even no. Better. No. No. <laughs> Shit. Shit, no. Shit, no. If I sniff his ear, he's gay. He'll have sex with me. <laughs> Do we want to see him sniff? Yeah! Well, it's... The people have spoken. It was kind of more of an ear sniffer liquor kind of thing. <laughs> so, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> David, that must have helped. Well, I, well it's, it's odd that, considering now you're claiming you licked her ear, why didn't they call you ear licker? I mean, that's, no. a, big, that's a bigger deal than just sniffing. I was at the end of the orchestra, right. they were all around there, and they could only just see the... Not again! The sniff. <laughs> <laughs> On those grounds, you're thinking... I, I think it's a lie. I, I think it's a lie, really. OK. Oh. OK. I'll go with you. I'll we, go with right, you. we think it's a lie. OK, Dom. You fools, it is... It's a lie. It's a lie. Well done. It's, uh, it's complete rubbish. Uh, Dom's nickname at school was never Ear Sniffer, although I can't help thinking that whoever writes these lies is working through some issues. <laughs> our next round is and always will be known as the Ring of Truth. In short, our teams will be uh, presented with a celebrity fact or two whose veracity it's then up to them to vouchsafe or poo-poo. Uh, David's team, guess first. So, uh, how true is this? Madonna has her toilet seat removed from every venue she performs at so that no-one sells it on eBay. I mean, the thing is that maybe by removing the toilet seat, she's created this sort of mystique. Oh, she has to remove her toilet seats, otherwise people will want to sell them. And in reality, no-one will want to sell something that her old arse had touched. <laughs> so the toilet seat, when they get taken away, where do they go to? A big toilet seat warehouse? They buy a new seat every time uh, and then throw it away at the end. It's a bit obsessive-compulsive, actually, isn't it? It's like people who keep their Wii in labelled jars. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely true. Very obsessive-compulsive people can sometimes do that. They sort of, as it were, file their various excreta. <laughs> How would you know? How would I know? About well, filing I, those sorts of well, things. I am a knowledgeable man and it's <laughs> part of my knowledge. <laughs> You know, if I, if I knew how I knew everything I knew, <laughs> then I'd, I'd only be able to know half as much, because it would all be clogged up with where I know it from. <laughs> so I, I cannot always cite my sources, I'm sorry. <laughs> My lad. <laughs> yes. Uh, there are other artists who do the same thing. Janet Jackson and Mary J. Blige um, also insist on having their toilet seats removed. <laughs> so what, uh, what are you veering towards? Um, well, it's That's pretty I true. Think it's feasible. It's, it's, yeah. it's feasible. I I'm just worried about these stars with huge warehouses full of old loose seats. <laughs> oh. I don't know why I'm worried about them. I, no, I should, I, there's no reason why I should give a <laughs> shit whether they live or die. <laughs> <laughs> um, She's not doing it, is she? She's not got the spanner and re-putting her thing on. So someone else is coming in, she's totally yeah. unaware of it. 
Just gets done. One of those things. <laughs> hey, are you, Madonna, I, I want to get off early. Are you going to need to go again before the end of the gig, or, or can I remove it now? I know it's not... Because, you know, you know I want to I get home before 11 if I can, so will you need another shit tonight? <laughs> I mean, it's fine. I can wait. I can wait. But maybe, maybe you could go now if you're ready. So, so you you maybe therefore, it's not true. No, go with your gut instinct. Okay, please. we say it's it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie, and it is indeed true. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yep. Sorry. It is true. Uh, Madonna does have all her toilet seats removed from every concert venue to prevent them being sold on eBay. She also had all the decent songs removed from her last album to prevent them being <laughs> sold at HMV. Uh, please, team, uh, your teaser. Tony Blair proposed to Cherie in a bumper car. To me, they look more like uh, roller coaster people, don't they? That's sort of like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's why her face is always like that. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the joke. But was... <laughs> oh, it was a visual. It was a visual. You know? <laughs> hey, listen, I'm shit at time travel. Don't worry about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll um... tell you what, though, I'm shit at time travel. <laughs> So, uh, true, lie, neither or, of both. What do you think, Dom? Dare I say, poppycock, I think. <laughs> I think true. You think true? Yeah, yeah. Really? But you are team captain, Lee, so it's your word that is final. Well, I, I have to say that I'm slightly, um, leaning towards John. Don't. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I, I suspect that actually that, that could be true mm. as well. And also it explains a lot as well, because there's a massive metal bar at the front, isn't there? <laughs> The truth. The truth. So help me God. Right, okay, and I can Please. tell you that Come on. it is indeed a complete rubbish. It's oh. a... <laughs> Our next round goes by the grammatically challenged title of This Is Mine, in which Lee's team all claim to have a close connection to tonight's special guest person. Only one of them is telling the truth, and it's up to David's team to seek that person out and speak his name. So please welcome this week's special guest person, Mark. Lee, perhaps you'd like to explain how you know Mark. Well, this is Mark. Uh, hi, Mark. And, uh, <laughs> I, uh, don't say hello, you rude bugger. <laughs> I, uh, I actually employ Mark solely to manage my iPod. <laughs> You've changed. <laughs> John, what is Mark to you? I cut the ribbon at the opening of Mark's karaoke superstore. <laughs> and finally, Dom, what's your relationship with Mark? Well, Mark's a, um, a good mate of mine, and we used to be in a, a magical double act, and uh, we used to be called Mysterio and Mark. So, <laughs> that's, that's... <laughs> uh, so there you are, a professional iPod manager, according to Lee, a karaoke <laughs> shopkeeper, if you believe John, or a former magical partner of Dom's. <laughs> uh, David, time to interrogate the enemy. This double act, yeah. what was it called again? Mysterio and Mark. So you chose Mysterio as a name and he chose... Yeah, and that's the reason why we uh, had to part separate ways in the end right. is just because he was just Mark and had to go. OK. And weren't you expelled from Magic Circle? Yes, I was. <laughs> for being a very naughty little wizard. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Lee... Uh, yes, David? When did you come to the point of realising that your iPod had just got on top of you and you... <laughs> and you needed to get in some help? No, I've got, I've got hundreds of albums, I bought the iPod, and oh, no, I don't know anything about computers, so... Uh... It strikes me that an iPod is a machine for putting music on itself, right? <laughs> you already have a machine for doing that, and you're paying a person to work that machine. <laughs> you, I mean, do you use your own toaster, or do you also <laughs> subcontract that? So, so do, I don't know, I mean, I know nothing about electricity, and, I, you know, I, so I just give him the bread, <laughs> and I tell him where the toaster is, and some sort of miracle happens, <laughs> and it's just a lot quicker that. Way. It's all right for you with your private education. I don't understand <laughs> the basic no, principles. They did not, you know, my top posh boy, I'm speaking. 
<laughs> I'm telling you now that I, un I understand the concept of getting it from the machine to the iPod. If I'm going to be honest, I don't know how you get it onto the computer in the first place. Right. Okay. Unless you put the CD in, which takes forever. Putting the CD in does not take forever. How does it get from the computer onto the iPod? Down a wire. I mean, you don't have to stand over it. The computer will just sort uh, of do it for I'm a control freak. Right.